Hey friends, Paisley and Glue here. And the Doctor Strange movie is coming out and we're all very excited about it. And I thought that I would revisit the build that I made in 2017 for the first movie and kind of go over some of my construction details. And uh, one of those techniques is vermicelli embroidery. And that is that really intricate embroidery that we see on the shoulder of his cape that has all of the like squiggle lines on it. And in the new costume, it looks like that's also sort of along the, the top of the chest area on his tunic as well. And it's a pretty easy technique, just takes a little bit of time, but I'll show you how to do it today. So vermicelli embroidery is pretty simple. I'm gonna use a contrasting thread so you can see what I'm doing, but you obviously would wanna match it to your thread but you're basically using a, tech, a stitching technique called couching, which is using going up and down pretty close to each other, kind of as close as you feel like you need to, to keep everything straight. If you're going to go around a curve, you're going to want to get a stitch kind of a stitch or two right around that curve to keep it in place. But it's really just, making it up as you go. So I find it pretty relaxing actually to do while you're watching TV or movie or something. And the distance that you are doing your embroidery wants to stay like somewhat consistent. So it looks like a thing. You also want to make sure that your th uh, the thread that you're this thread is sort of appropriate for the project so it needs to be sort of thick enough to have to give you dimension but not so thick that it doesn't take these curves really nicely so this is like a waxed leather cord and i don't know that i love it because it um like the twist wants to come out of it kind of easily but i didn't have any left of the one millimeter waxed cotton cord that i actually used for dr strange so this is kind of what I had on hand, which is fine. But you're just kind of making it up. If you have um, like a set pattern piece that you're doing, it's helpful to either um, like probably thread trace your seam allowances so that you know like exactly where to end your embroidery because you don't want it to like go into the seams because it will likely add a lot of bulk that you don't necessarily want. So just consider that when you're starting. But going back to what I was saying about the cord and choices, like you don't want it to be so thick, but you also don't want it to be too thin because you want it to be able to give you a decent dimension. So all this work is worth it. Um, this is often used in gold work embroidery. So you'll use like a, a bullion thread or something as your embroidery thread to do some really nice work. And that might be like much finer work. So it might be like really tiny little squiggles with a much smaller twist, or it could be something as big as this as well. And the idea is to have one continuous cord without any breaks. So as you are sort of making up your design, um, you know, think about where you're headed and don't like box yourself into a corner on your pattern piece where suddenly, you know, you have to turn around and go in the other direction to get the rest of the piece embroidered, but you don't have space to do that. Okay, so you get the general idea there. That was about five minutes of work. So it's not, you know, the fastest thing you've ever done, but it's not too bad either. And then to finish off, your cord there's a couple different ways to do it so you can sort of start in the corner of your project and just run the cord off into the seam um, that is what i did for dr strange because i was using a pretty thick cord on a faux on a faux suede and so trying to get that cord to the back of my fabric would have been really difficult but in gold work, there's a thing called plunging. 
And that basically is you're going to take a needle with a very large eye. If I can still not might not be large enough to get all this through there. There we go. You need to leave yourself enough of a tail. And then you sort of slowly work that thread to the back of your fabric. And then once it's in the back, you can um, use more thread to stitch it down however you like. You can tie it to itself. If it's, if it's super flexible, you can tie ends together or you can use these stitches that you've already got kind of and like use that to kind of wrap around your cord to keep it in place. And I would leave your tail, you know, like I would leave this tail a little longer, like if you need to kind of wrap it around itself so that it's really nice and secure and isn't going to pull out of this hole. That's, that's what we want to avoid. But there we go. A little section of um, vermicelli embroidery. Again, you're going to use thread that's the same color as your cord to couch down. Um, but it's a really cool effect and you can do, you can get a lot of texture um, and interest to some select areas of fabric if you'd like to use that as they have done now in several pieces of, of the Doctor Strange costume among, along several movies now. <laughs>